If you think about what happened this quarter, right? If you take out the credit sales, they lost about $66 million excluding credit sales. But if you also adjust for Elon Musk's stock-based comp, that's a one-time charge as well. So credit sales one time, Elon Musk stock comp one time. So if you adjust for both of those items, they did about 10 cents in earnings uh, this most recent quarter. So if you annualize that, that's 40 cents. At $450, that means this stock is trading at over a thousand times on a P to E basis. You want to understand this seemingly unstoppable market where, again, the Dow rallied another 153 points, S&P gained 0.52%, NASDAQ advanced 0.19%. Well, then look no further than the stock of Tesla. This is an amazing market, but it's also been an amazingly challenging market. Individual investors, though, are back. They now make up north of 20 percent, some say 25 percent of the action. And they've weathered everything from frightened, screaming billionaires to the nastiest presidential race in living memory to a horrific, horrifying global pandemic. They've steeled their hearts against the lack of covid vaccine or even a therapeutic. They aren't oblivious to the incredibly high unemployment rate, although they haven't let it change their minds about trying to make money in the stock market. And what's the perfect symbol of that attitude? Tesla. Not the car, not the man, not even the company, but Tesla, the concept. Price to earnings basis. No stock in any technology exchange is trading at that level. What that means is investors are saying they're going to grow earnings every year on an annualized basis at uh, Kager at 1,000%. But if you take a step back and look at what's happening in Europe, Year to date through the third quarter, European EV sales, excluding Tesla, are up 106 percent. However, Tesla's European uh, 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 EV sales are down 14 percent. So the market up 106, Tesla down 14. So not only are they losing share, but they're seeing their sales decline. In China, essentially their sales have essentially um, have stayed flat since May at about 11,000 cars. And now they're shipping cars made in China to Europe because there's not enough demand. That was supposed to be their growth market. This is something that stands for American greatness at a time when it can feel like our country doesn't have much to root for in a world that hates us. I don't remember if I, I no, I cannot remember a time in my life when we were this hated and I lived through the Nixon administration. Now, Tesla reported last night, and while the stock barely budged today, the fact is they delivered some fantastic results. This was a clean top and bottom line beat. No funny business ledger to end nothing. With $1.4 billion in cash flow, double what Wall Street was looking for, Tesla hit its aggressive U.S. build targets for the quarter, and they still think they can make a half million Model 3 and Model Y units in America this year, along with another 250,000 Model 3s in China. Elon Musk is even planting the flag in the global capital of the auto industry with a Berlin plan that will start producing cars from Europe next year. So you have 46 Gordon. new EVs coming next year. So we, we think that they're going to have problems, um, you know, seeing the growth. And this, they're trading at a very right. high growth multiple, Gordon, let but me, they're let not me growing. Just play out the, let, me just, let me just play out the bullish case to you and, and get sure. your reaction. The, the bullish case would be, sure, they get these, credit, these, these, these credits right now that those credits are allowing them or giving them runway to continue to innovate in their business to, to a degree, perhaps in the future, that they continue to outpace their competition, that the business unto itself is, should not be valued strictly as a car company. We've had people like Shamath Palihapitiya, who's a big investor in Tesla, come on the program and say, you need to think about this not as a classic automaker, you need to think about the potential for this being a, a major, effectively, energy company five to ten years out. What do you what do you say to that investor who's watching this morning, who thinks that? All right. So I just want to be clear. Again, they roughly all of their credit sales are to FIA or FCA. FCA has stated they're going to spend about um, 800, 800 million euros through 2023 over the next three years. Tesla has essentially recognized all of that revenue. Already, we only think there's about 500 million left. So next year, they're not going to have the credit sales they have right now. They're not going to do 400 million in credit sales. We'll see the Tesla truck made in Austin sometime next year, too. They've left the old school automakers in the dust. At this point, it's not even a fair comparison. Even though Tesla spent $2.4 billion on new production capacity, service centers, and supercharging locations, among other items, their cash still increased by $5.9 billion, bringing their total hoard up to $14.5 billion. I can remember only about a year ago when people still worried that Tesla was functionally bankrupt. Now I can argue that it's got the best balance sheet in the industry. Most important for once, Elon Musk conducted a flawless conference call 
comported himself well, not eccentric, not condescending, not a farcical off-Broadway comedy. He played it straight. How many CEOs wish they could kick off their call with saying, and I quote, all right, so Q3 was our best quarter in history. We achieved record production deliveries, record revenue, record net income, both gap and non-gap, and record free cash flow of $1.4 billion, end quote. Right, they guided last quarter that they were going to do about 200 million in credit sales this quarter, Q3. They did about 400 million. And this isn't this isn't cash based credit sales. This is credit sales they're pulling forward from future years. You can see their receivables are up by a similar amount. With respect to them being a bunch of different businesses, look at their energy energy division. Revenues are up roughly 200 million, but so is cost of goods sold. Listen, this guy has taken a situation that was easy to dump on where many analysts had sell readies in the stock. Some of them even predicted bankruptcy. And he's turned it into a $400 billion business. At this point, Tesla's transcended the auto industry. It is a tech company that's figured out how to store clean energy and then use it to fuel cars and who, who knows what else. Most automakers have to spend more money advertising than Tesla spends on building new factories. They blanket the airways with ads nobody wants to see, not even the ones voiced by the great John Slattery. Tesla, on the other hand, doesn't need to advertise product markets itself. Today, two analysts were forced to upgrade the stock from hold to buy after fighting it all the way up. Sure, the stock's already more than quintupled this year, but as one of them explained, fashionably late, upgrading to outperform. The other note said the margin picture improves significantly, shifting to market outperform. Uh, Where did these uh, Johnny come lately uh, uh, get it wrong? Was it that they didn't realize Tesla's a great technology company with a surprisingly reasonable valuation versus other tech? It only trades at 13 times sales at a time when dozens of tech stocks trade at more than 50 uh, 20 times sales, one sells to 50, which is Zoom, and now uh, Snowflake's over 100. With 39% revenue growth and a 9.2% operating margin, Tesla deserves to trade like those cloud plays, especially when you consider all the intellectual property that goes into one of their cars, including a battery that's only going to get better and cheaper. So you didn't have any increase in gross profit. Their R&D spend is not increasing as a percent of revenue. It's dropping as a percent of revenue. So the point is, we think that next year, we think they're going to go back into structural losses. And, you know, every single question, the only, the only question that should have been asked on their earnings call last night was, what is your credit sales in Q4? Because if it's not $400 million, if it's $200 million, they could potentially lose money. That's the only thing that matters. They are not making more money than they're selling in credit, and that's one time in nature. So I think the point is, you can say a lot of things you want to say about Tesla, but the reality is you're talking about a company that's valued at a thousand times earnings where you're seeing growth decline in Europe, growth has stalled in China, and overall they're not seeing the growth they need to sow, and they're, 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 they're seeing significant competition next year. Keep in mind, they just introduced new guidance where they said it's going to be tough to do 500,000 cars of deliveries this year. They're saying their capacity is 860,000 cars right now. So they're not even able to sell out their existing capacity. And they're talking about ramping additional factories. Last Gordon, night, they pushed out Berlin, it seems, 12 months. So I think there's a lot of problems Gordon, that people just aren't focused on. Cause of observable excellence. Not social media mystique or, or cloud brilliance, but actual metal bent around brilliance. The analysts couldn't understand that Tesla's more than just a vehicle. It's a vehicle of hope in a miasma of gloom. Musk even made it easier for individual investors to get a piece of it by splitting the stock. Now, it's not a cold stock as I once thought. That was wrong. It's a story of American ingenuity, probably a lot like Henry Ford when he first burst on the scene with his universal car, except with a much cleaner engine and without Henry Ford's trademark anti-Semitism. Here's the bottom line. When it comes to Tesla, the doubters were wrong, and the believers were right. Those believers are not the rich, cautious, state preachers of index fund handcuffs. They're the individual investors who are sick and tired of being told that they're stupid, too stupid to manage their own money. Turns out they can make a lot of money when you buy stock in a great company with a visionary CEO and a revolutionary product. That shouldn't take so many people by surprise, and I hope it doesn't after the shimmering star that is Elon Musk. Tesla.